Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I'm here to for another uh, book book review, uh, and uh, this is another series that I really, really, really like, and doesn't get a lot of mention, but is completely amazing. Uh, uh, this book that I'm reviewing right now is Night of Knives by Ian Isselmont. I like that cover first of all because you can just you know, you can see the name real good. Certain colors you really can't do that with. Has the light reflects off there and things. But uh, uh, this right here is kind of a prequel to the Malazan Books of the Fallen, which is a 10 book series by Steven Erickson. And he developed this series with Ian Isselmont uh, to be almost like a Dungeons and Dragons type of thing. They had originally d developed this as a, 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 a as a game, like Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons and, and uh, The Gathering and, and things like this nature, but they finally decided, hey, why don't we just write a book series? And so, um, obviously you have the 10 book main uh, uh, series that is wrote all by Steven Erickson. Uh, but Isselmont and Erickson both write short stories and also novellas, what I would call novellas, you know, books probably about under 400 pages uh, that, that fit within the world of Malazan. Okay, and so, uh, you know, you can read them all 1 through 10 or you can go in chronological order. And for chronological order, obviously the first book would be Night of Knives by Ian Isselmont. Uh, and in this book, uh, we're first introduced to the concept of Warrens, basically different realms of power that one can draw power from, mages and, and stuff like this. And, uh, you know, this book, like I said, it, it basically touches on it. But what I like about it is, uh, obviously, we have uh, Kellenvid, who is the emperor. And he hasn't been seen in quite some time, but, you know, in the past, uh, Kalanvid and his, uh, his right-hand man, Dancer, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, took over this whole, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the main, main continents and everything of, uh, the, you know, the world of the Malazan, uh, stemming from uh, where the island, where, where they got their name, uh, Malaz, the Malaz Island, uh, and that is the place, obviously, that's the location of the dead house, okay, very important place, not only is it a house, but it's kind of a gateway to a particular realm, you know, okay, so uh, we have that meshing good, and Dancer, obviously, back in the deal, he had a group that he had founded, uh, like a secret service type of group called the Talons, all right, well, we have this other lady. Her name is Surly, you know. And, uh, you know, we learned through flashbacks and stuff that she had this other organization that was kind of in competition with the Talons called the Claws, which are also very loyal to her in this situation. And we're in, during one of these campaigns in the Seven Cities, obviously, uh, we have where uh, Dasim Ulter, who is the, you know, the first sword, and, uh, you know, several of the first swords were sent there <clears throat> on a mission. Well, you know, things happened, and basically one of, one of those guys that served in, 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 the, in the first sword, uh, Temper, is a main character in this Knot of Knives. And obviously he witnesses a few things, and, and they escape, and, and uh, you know, he, he goes into hiding, basically. I don't want to ruin too much of it. I want you to read it, but anyways, th this obviously is the past part of it. Okay, so now we have uh, the uh, the Malaz Island. Okay, we're here. Temper obviously is incognito, and uh, we also meet another character of the book called Kiska, who's basically trying to get off of this crap and rock and she just wants to get out of the rock, but she shows some remarkable talent. Uh, and, you know, she has, uh, you know, her her aunt, Agatha, Agatha who is, uh, uh, you know, she, she's part of this whole thing. 
she doesn't qu quite know what's going on and if, and, and if her aunt is able to do certain powers and you know she basically Kiska doesn't really believe in a whole bunch of this hocus pocus crap and neither does Temper for that matter he, he's more of a you know he's a soldier in things and he, he, he don't really believe in a lot of this crap well everything that happens start uh, starts to go freaky because of what we would call Halloween basically what's coming up is called the shadow moon and that's a time that's uh, where reputedly souls of the dead are able to return and kind of get a little vengeance on, on, on how they might have died and stuff during a shadow moon. Basically, what we would term Halloween. Okay? Okay, so the shadow moon's coming up. Freaky things are starting to happen. And also, that's also a signal for a convergence of realms. So all these other realms that normally you wouldn't have access to unless you could you know use them uh, or access them through through uh, you know power or whatever they're converging on a shadow moon so a lot of these realms are seeping into the other ones well that's just what's happening here uh, and uh, that's what starts making things interesting hounds the hounds of the shadow realm you know start descending upon the population you know, certain <clears throat> shades or ghosts, if you will, are starting to come back. But once again, most of these people are just like, what the crap, you know. And once again, Kellenved and Dancer, they haven't been seen in like for some time, so people's not really knowing what's going on. But, you know, all of a sudden a certain envoy, that, an envoy arrives at Malaz and, uh, and, you know, Lots of secretive things are going down. Who who is those people? Why did they arrive, and for what for? Uh, you know, certain things are going to go down here, and uh, lots of things are not being told to the people, so they really don't know. And all this is converging around this shadow moon. And uh, so basically, and there's some also some some great characters that's introduced here too. Uh, uh, Edge Walker, awesome. Uh, you'll need to. You'll need to keep an eye on him. I don't want to give anything away. I want you to read and find out. But uh, he—he's great. He's basically a, you know, a he, 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 he's a slave to the shadow realm. So he has to walk around, and he has several different interactions with lots of different characters. It's very interesting. And so, like I said, people are like, "What happened to the emperor? Is he dead, or, or is he just being secretive like he always was?" Why is Surly all of a sudden asserting herself and and all these claws seem to be, you know, coming out to, uh, you know, take control of the situation? There's also a shadow cult thing. People that believe that the Emperor Kalanvid is going to once again return on the Shadow Moon and, 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 and whip, whip, whip butt, you know. But here's the deal. Is that what he has in mind? Could Kalanvid and Dancer's purposes be... A little bit something different involved here could they possibly lose everything they've worked for in order to gain so much more where are they going you know it seems like they've already you know tamed the continent they've gotten all that going for them but now all of a sudden could they be going for something more could they be overshooting themselves uh, you know it's it, 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 you know it all winds around into a very very good tale only 281 pages uh, you know, you could probably may maybe take you two days. Uh, but also we get introduced into something that will be a major thing into the ten book series of Erickson. The, the Jugots. The, the Jugots, you know, the uh, a race, uh, an ancient race that, that, that has the tusk that's humanoid but has tusks that are, you know, like, like a boar. Uh, very amazing things and temper has to once again stand in to do something he was meant to do and it all revolves around the dead house is it just an old shabby house or could it be a portal to something so much more uh, and that's what really gets you I mean you know the first maybe 80 or so pages of the book you're like okay I really don't know where this is going um, but then it really starts to take off and then the last part of the book just flies. Uh, it becomes a great read and it really whets your appetite to sink into the 
to the main Malazan books of the Fallen. Uh, and so I highly recommend this book. Uh, so go out there. I think it's like maybe four dollars on Kindle. Um, but and, and even though Erickson is the one, Stephen Erickson is the one that that that, that wrote the other ones. Uh, I will tell you this right now. Ian Isselmont is a very, very underrated author. He's wrote not only this one, but he's wrote you know books about the Crimson Guard, which is a you know a storied resistance from uh, is a big res resistance force against the uh, Kalanvid and and when they initially tried to start the the Malazan Empire, uh, the Crimson Guard and things. Isselmont wrote several novellas about that. And so, I mean, it is just really, he is a very good, very good author. Uh, Erickson obviously will blow your mind. Uh, if you think that George R. R. Martin made you cry at, at the Red Wedding and, and things like that, uh, uh, Erickson and Isselmont will, will break you in half. Uh, these guys, uh, and it's not coming from the whole traditional, um, you know, you know, Tolkien, Robert Jordan, Brandon Sanderson. I mean, this is influenced by Dungeons and Dragons and a whole duffer genre, but I mean, as far as it comes down to just the writing, and that's the way it always does, it, it comes down to the writing. Uh, they spared no expense. You will be very pleased with Isselmont's writing and, and, and definitely Stephen Erickson. So I highly recommend that you go out and buy this book and then go buy the rest of them. Uh, in, in the book, Malazan Books of the Fallen. So uh, from my bookshelf to yours, I hope you really enjoy this and, uh, and, uh, and, and not, you know, think, oh, it's a little bit too difficult. Nah, man, just, just dive right in. It, it's going to be worth the swim. I guarantee it. So, uh, happy reading, everybody. And, uh, have a great week.